am good. Yeah, it, it made no sense to me. Made no sense to me. All right, let's move into the NFC South. Um, oh, what, what did you division. What did you have them seven. at? Nine, nine and seven? seven. All right, yeah, and I had them nine and seven as well. All right, NFC South. Wait, you said, yeah, I thought you said ten and six, but it's it yeah, no, no, no. I did have ten and six. You're right. No, yeah, you're fine though. It you won't change, change. It don't matter. No, 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 no. I'll stick ten to six. It'll be fine. Maybe, maybe they'll finally get over the hump. Um, all right. With that said, NFC South starting off the Atlanta Falcons went seven and nine last year. Look, started out the year one and seven, ended the year six and two. Uh, the tale of two seasons, I guess you all could right. say. Um, so I, I, let me let me jump in here. You know how I do my little chart, right? Mm-hmm. Last year I did my chart. And when I was done, I don't look at any of the teams. I don't count up any of the wins until the whole thing is done. So I don't really know who I think is good and who I think is bad until it's over. All right? And then I had the Atlanta Falcons going 4-12. and 12. And I told you, that's wrong. I threw that sheet of paper away, and I redid it. I redid the whole thing because Atlanta was too far off. And then they started the season off 1-7. and seven, And I thought... I shouldn't have thrown that damn paper away. <laughs> I should have went with my gut. I should have went with my instincts, and I didn't. Go ahead. Their win total right now is 7.5. To go over is minus 125. To go under is plus 105. So they think it is more likely that Atlanta will get to eight wins. And I don't know if that's necessarily the case. Uh, to win the division, they are plus 650. Dan Quinn enters his sixth season. And this, I, I really think this is make or break year for Dan Quinn. Um Going through the stats, offensive yards per play, 5.5 yards per play was what they rolled. It was good for number 15. On defense, they gave up 5.8 yards per play. That was number 24. Uh, Neither of those numbers are very good. And their turnover margin, they gave up 0.3 turnovers per game. That was number 25 in the league. Uh, Look, I mean, they brought in Todd Gurley. They brought in Hayden Hurst to replace uh, Hooper. Um... You know, it, it, we'll see if Gurley has anything left in the tank. Uh, Hurst was a backup for the Ravens and and performed pretty well when Mark Andrews went out. Uh, they are going to rely in their secondary on rookie corner A.J. Terrell because he's going to have to start immediately. And in a division where you've got Teddy Bridgewater, and, who is, you know, okay, fine, whatever. But then you got Tom Brady and you've got um, uh, Drew Brees. That, that, that's going to be a problem because I think they're going to pick on him quite a bit. This team is too good to tank and not good enough to make the playoffs. I think they drop off a game from what they were last year. I mean, they got all the offensive talent in the world, right? But the defense is still a major problem, which is kind of crazy for a defensive coach. That's what Quinn was. Like, he was supposed to come in and revamp that defense. He hasn't done it a single time. Uh, I've got him going 6-10 and 10 this year. I've got him going under that 7.5 and, and, and pretty significantly here. I, I just... I couldn't find the wins. I couldn't. I don't. It. I want good things for the city of Atlanta. I want good things for this uh, for this franchise. I just couldn't find the wins. I did my sheet. Came up with four and twelve. I'm sticking with four and twelve. So the other day we covered the NFC North. Okay. And everyone talked about how Matt Patricia, first coach fired, first coach fired. I said, Whoa, no, 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 no. Not yet. They're going to be too good. They're going to win too many games. Then we did the AFC North. And everybody said, Adam Gates, first coach fired, first coach fired. No, no, no. The new GM that they just hired is BFF with Adam Gates. I think you got to fire both of them. They literally just hired that guy this year. I don't think they're going to do that. I think his job is safe. This guy, first coach fired. Book it. Plus 1,000. Because if he starts off 0-4 or 1-5, one and four, something like that, like he did last year. And it's it's completely Gone. possible. Yanked, and his schedule is tough. And I don't care how he starts off this year. At the end of the year, he ain't finishing like the way he finished last year. That's for damn certain. Have you got the schedule in front of you? Uh, no, but I looked at it right before he came up. I can pull it up right now. I, I know he finishes with the Chiefs, the Saints, and the Bucks as his last three games. And I'm going to tell you, that is LLL. Yeah, no, one hundred percent. But the beginning of the schedule was was pretty tough. Um, yeah, I don't think I think I think they have a tough draw. I just don't remember. You pulling it up? Yeah, I'm trying to get it. Hold on. Here we go. All right. So Atlanta's schedule to start with is the Seattle at Seahawks. Dallas. Yeah, the Seahawks at the Cowboys, the Bears at the Packers, Carolina at the Vikings, the Lions. I'm at telling the you, Panthers. man, I don't yeah. see wins here. You're going to beat up on the Panthers. As we get through this, I think this is the division of the haves and the have-nots more than any other division in the league. But you're going to – outside of the Falcons and, and you know, 
I mean, outside of the Panthers and, you know, maybe the Raiders aren't great. Maybe the Chargers struggle. I don't know where you're finding wins, man. I don't either. I don't either. I mean, I I, I put them at 6 and 10, and I felt like that was actually kind of generous. I, thought, so, I, th- I, I think it is generous. I do. But, like I said, I, I don't know. I, they is, got a they got a lot of offensive weapons, man. They they I know they I know they do. I know they'll be able to score. Um, of course they weren't able to score a couple of years ago. And I'd say those and, offensive weapons hadn't scored a lot lately. I know you you got a valid point there. You got a valid point. All right, let's dive into the Carolina Panthers. Matt Rule comes in in his debut season, and uh, and we are ready to rock and roll. Um, five and a half is their win total. And to go over is minus 120. And to go under is plus 100. To win the division is plus 2,000. Um, you know, I, I like I like Matt Rule. I like Matt Rule a lot. And I think that this team with Joe Brady is... Uh, uh, hold on. I'm dealing with a slight emergency. <sighs> okay, got it. I'm supposed to be off work right now. It's kind of ridiculous. All right, Matt Rule... Uh, I love Matt Rule. I think he's going to be fantastic. I think Joe Brady bringing in Teddy Bridgewater is going to be fantastic because I think that he can do with Bridgewater kind of what he did with Joe Burrow. I think they can be really, really good. But this team has got a lot of building left, right? They they brought in a bunch of free agents. They they, I mean, this is the first team in in ever to draft all defensive players, and they needed them because the defense. It, there, there ain't people there. <laughs> I mean, it's rough when they they lost Luke Keekley last year, and and he was the leader. And they are they are rough, man. Uh, it, it's going to be a long season, I think. But I, I I love Brady. I love Bridgewater. They brought in Russell Okung to uh, to to line up at left tackle. I think he's going to shore up that uh, offensive line. Robbie Anderson, good weapon to have. Uh, obviously, a former Temple guy. Matt Rule, of course, bringing in guys he knows. I, you know, I think it's going to be the Christian McCaffrey show. But I also think you got some pieces to work with on offense. You just got to wait for that defense to find some leaders to grow up a little bit. Yep. Um, they're just young. They're just oh, yeah. so green. In the NFL, they're going to get picked apart. I, I going through like I, it's not even worth going through the stats. I mean, it, it, this is no, just a completely the, different team. The, the teams, the, yeah, that's yeah. what I'm about to say. Last year's team ain't anything like this year's team. So it's all fantasy. It's all fiction. Yeah. I I like. This coach, I like the coaching staff. I like Bridgewater. I I like a lot about this team. I've got them seven and nine, and Holy I might be shit. I might be a little bit biased. I'll say that. Okay. So I like this coach. I I like this quarterback. I got them three and thirteen. Ooh, gracious! Now let me let me let me give you a little Matt Rule history lesson. Okay. Okay. This is my guy. All right. This is my guy. All right. Worship this dude. Love this dude. In the tank with this dude. Okay. All right. Got the temple. Temple was bad at football. First year, they won two games. Second year, they won six games. Third and fourth year, won 10 games. Jumps to Baylor. What did he do first year at Baylor? Yeah, it was really bad. 1-11. One, one win. Yeah. Then year two, seven wins. Then year three, 11 wins. Year one is always a scrap year for Matt Rule. It's just, it, I don't think the NFL is going to be, I don't think you're going to be able to be better at the pros than you were in college. I think your first year is getting in this locker room, figuring out, who do I want to stay in this locker room, and who do I want to get the hell out of this locker room? Okay, we don't care about winning and losing. We're going to try to win every game, but really, I'm just evaluating everybody over the course of the season. And then next year, there you we'll go. Bring in my guys, who I need my guys, and then we'll start getting better. Okay, I believe I believe your record will be a good record next year without even knowing what the team looks like because I trust Matt Rule. They will not. They will not be a six win football team next year. They will be better than that. I trust this man. Okay. But this year, this year they're going to scrap and claw and fight with their t- fingernails to get to three. Okay. I think they're going to be a tough out. I don't yeah. think these teams that I, I think like I said, are going to win two wins or three wins, this is the NFL. I don't think they're just going to get blown out every game. The difference between winning and losing in the NFL is so small. It's so hard. All these games down come down to the fourth quarter, and – Who makes mistakes and who doesn't? I'm going to tell you, nine rookies on defense, yeah, they're going to make a lot of mistakes at the end of the games. (laughs) You you got a valid point. That's going to happen. You got a valid point. So, I I, I know that I'm biased on this one. I know why. I love love this man. And I think I want Teddy to be good. 
this is just not how it's going to work. That team doesn't have enough talent. No, this is this don't. is a rebuild job from from the foundation. Your up. best player cannot be a running back and win in the NFL anymore. That that's the truth. That's that's just the truth. You you have a very valid point, uh, and I I trust you on this. So I, it, this is not one that I'm going to bet on. I had um, to look back to make sure he w- was he that bad his first year at all these other schools. He was that bad. He was that he bad. Was that well, bad. because he, he tears it all down. Well, and, because the programs he took over were that bad, and he just oh, yeah, yeah. breaks them to nothing. And I, they don't have to destroy this. Pro, it's the pros. It's not college. But I I think the fact that they didn't spend a single nickel on a defensive player is I I want to bring my guys in on defense. I want to bring guys in that I want, but they're not going to be good now. They're going to be good later. So we just spend all our money on offense for right now, and and you know we'll just we'll go at that, and then we'll just try to win the best we can. Uh, yeah, you got a point. You I got hope a point. I'm wrong. Oh, I hope you are too. I hope you are too. And that, I love this man. That would make I love, my. Uh, I love this man. That would make my prediction look much better. But I, yeah. I think you are probably closer to correct than I am. So, um, so with that said, we move into. Oh, go ahead. What you got? Me? Oh, I thought you. I thought you were stopping me for a minute. No, I was just nope. taking a breath. Sorry. <laughs> I'm really in bad shape. Hey, it is all good. It is all good. Let's dive into the New Orleans Saints. And Sean Payton enters his 15th season as the head coach of the Saints. Not too shabby. They went 13-3 and three last year. Ten and a half is the win total. To go over is minus 125. To go under is plus 105. So, obviously, they expect them to go 11 wins or better. To win the division, they are the favorites. Minus 110. Uh, that's about right on the line, right? Um, let's see. Chris Carter jumped in and said, I'm here to get information on the dogs, not to hear a sermon on politics. That's a, that's a right. late. Uh, <laughs> the, the politics was like 40 minutes ago. Um, He's probably, it did. I think when they comment, if they come in late, they're watching it from the beginning, and we're getting their comment as they send it. Uh, maybe so, I guess. I think that's how this works because this has happened in the past. Ah, uh, okay. Well, either way, either way. Um, so with that said, um, let's see. Let's. Uh, uh, we're, we're on the Saints. We're on the Saints. Sorry, that threw me off completely. This has been a really weird day. Uh, the biggest thing here is Alvin Kamara. What are we going to get with Alvin Kamara? Yeah, he's uh, look, fine. He showed up for practice day. They're going to work this thing out. Okay. Well, look. He. Uh, here's the other thing: is he was injured for. Quite a bit of last season. He missed seven games. Well, he he only started nine games last year. Uh, only scored six touchdowns. That's not good. That's what you want to. That's not what you want to hear. So, uh, signed wide receiver Emmanuel Sanders. I think he's going to work well in this offense. He, he seems like. Uh, oh, there we go. Chris said came in late. Saw the comment. Sorry. <laughs> All good. Um, so the defense. You know they're they're going to be helped a lot. They brought in uh, free agent defensive lineman Malcolm Jenkins. I think he is going to be a massive piece for them. This team is loaded. Um, you know, if Breeze gets hurt, like, do you have somebody like Teddy Bridgewater? I, I think we could probably trust Jameis for a couple of games. Uh, you know, I, I think the team is absolutely loaded. Offensive yards per play last year, five point nine, and that's number six in the league. Uh, defense was not bad, five point three yards per play. That's number twelve in the league. Turnover margin, they gained point. Eight turnovers per game. That's number two in the league. At, they went thirteen and three last year. I don't think they'll do that this year. But I, I've got them at eleven and five. I like them I to go them, over. I got them twelve and four. There you go. I mean, this, I this team good. is absolutely I loaded. I think they're really, really good. I think they could still be good even if Kamara didn't want to play the season. Uh, Kamara's going to play the season. Kamara's going to be fine. They're going to work this thing out. I went a little bit in panic mode yesterday, but I think he's going to be fine. I think. Uh, I think you're probably right. I think you're probably right. Um, so I guess that only leaves us with one team. That's right. And that's that the would only be, team that matters. That would be Tampa Bay. That's the only team that matters. The Tampa that's the only Bay. Reason I showed up today. <laughs> the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, seven and nine last year. Which, when we get to the stats, you were just the fact that they went seven and nine is just utterly absurd. Uh, win total is nine this year. Seems like that might be a little low. Um, but okay, to go over is minus 125. To go over, or to, excuse me, to go over is minus 125. To go under is plus 105. To win the division, plus 175. And look, I mean, Bruce Arians, we both love Bruce Arians. Uh, we both love Byron Leftwich. We both love Todd Bowles. Um, yards per play last year on offense, 5.9. That's good for number nine in the league. 
Defensive yards per play, they only gave up 5.1. That was good for number seven in the league. This defense was so good last year compared to what people expected. Oh, yes. I mean, they were unbelievable. I mean, they were they were number five. Todd in Bowles is a grown-ass yeah. man when it comes to calling defenses and getting them ready to play. Yes. Um, that man knows what he's doing. Now, here is where uh, they became a problem, right? The, the defense it gave up some scoring and whatnot, and they were really, really damn good when the offense was not turning the ball over. They were number 28 in the league last year at giving up the ball. Uh, 0.8 turnovers they gave up every single game. They gave up 41 turnovers last year. 30 interceptions, 11 fumbles. You, you just ain't going to win a lot of games doing that, right? They I mean, still won seven. Jesus. I mean, they won seven, but that's because they were that's, really damn good yes, because elsewhere. Th- this this team is is just... Well, let me let me read Somebody off the names. Not giving the ball away. Tom Brady, Gronk, Mike Evans, Godwin, uh, OJ Howard, Cameron Brait. Uh, don't forget Man, about I'm Ronald sad. Jones, Keyshawn Vaughn, and they signed Shady. Like, I think they're going to be awesome. Uh, you, Mar- you named a bunch of people that don't matter and a bunch of people that matter a lot. So, uh, like I said, defense was great last year when the offense didn't put them in awful spots. And the offense um, didn't go put them in awful spots yeah. ever again. I think I think ever, you're right. Ever again. Uh, Mark jumps in. He said, hey, guys, you guys have been busy on videos. Yeah, 100%. 100%. We, we have been busy with SBR. We have been busy right here. And, hey, we're in football season. This is what we do. So, it's time to get at it. Uh, I have got them going 10-6. and six, And, honestly, I I could have had them going 12-4. and four, But I, I tried to calm down my expectations. Like, I know that Tom is getting older. But I, I, I tried to temper... The expectations here. I've got them ten and six. I still got them going over the win total of nine. Uh, I think they have. I mean, they are going to be right there with the Saints, at competing for that division crown. I agree. So, what what are your thoughts here? Are you, I mean, is this just going to be Super Bowl or bust? Or, I mean, what are we what are we looking at? A hundred percent. So, this is the best head coach, offensive coordinator, defensive coordinator combination in the league. There's not one. There's not one better than this. Okay, until Bill Belichick actually names somebody to be defensive coordinator one day, that might change. But he he doesn't have defensive coordinators anymore, and so that's this is it. Okay, this is it. This team is incredibly loaded on offense and on defense. There are no coordinators that I trust more than the guys running this team. There's no head coach I trust more. They needed somebody at the helm, and I don't even think that they needed. Tom Brady, the greatest quarterback of all time, the skeleton of Tom Brady is worlds better than what Jameis was because while Jameis created unbelievably big plays and excitement and could just sling the ball, his accuracy was insane at at times, and he just gave the ball away. He took the sail out of the offense, and he, he left his defense out to die time and time again. This defense could be the best defense in the league this year when it's done when we're looking at scoring defense because they're not going to be – what do we say all the time? I learned this from Mike Lombardi. The best way to play defense is to not play defense at all. Yes. And 100%. I don't think – this defense is going to be on the field so little compared to what they've been in the past because, A, I don't think they're going to score fast like they did with Jameis, and, B, I don't think they're going to get the ball turned over all the time like they did with Jameis. And this defense – minutes on the field is going to get cut in half from what last year's was just cut in half immediately. I think if you're right. You think if you think Tom Brady is old and can't throw the ball deep, you didn't see any of those playoff games at the end. He didn't have anybody to throw to. Okay. All his receivers are gone. He was throwing to Philip Dorsett and a rookie named the kill Harry that, that never was healthy the whole year and can't separate. Okay. Yeah. And he was still he still had zip on his fastball. He was throwing lasers down the field 25 and 30 yards deep. Now nobody was catching him, but he can throw the football still. Not worried about that. This will be the most accurate passer that Mike Evans has ever had thrown him the ball. That Goblin has ever had thrown him the ball. And we got a new friend. Okay. We got a new friend. There's a young man by the name of Scotty Miller. All right. Okay. You don't know his name now. You're going to know his name later. No one knew who Wes Welker was until he got with Thomas. 
No one knew who Julian was until he got with Thomas. Well, you're going to know who Scotty is, okay? Okay. It's got him a little whitey friend that is fast and, 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 and runs just a bunch of weird, crazy trash routes, okay? Can't get open, but catches the football and gets hit real hard. That's exactly what Julian was good at. That's exactly what Wes was good at. And apparently, they've been working out all offseason, right? I'm okay. telling you, okay. this is going to be good. You're right about uh, uh, the running back. Oh, God. Which one? Keyshawn Vaughn? No, God, no. Uh, Ronald Listen, Jones? Ronald Jones. Rookies and Tom don't mix. Tom's not going to trust a 20-year-old kid. He's just not. If you got hopes for Keyshawn Vaughn in fantasy this year, your hopes are dashed. It ain't happening. I didn't unless, draft him. I'm all good. Unless Ronald Jones gets hurt. But I think Ronald Jones is going to be big. Well, even still, you still got all, Shady. So, oh, God, get off. Please stop. Please Dude, just stop. They brought him just in. Stop it. He's a veteran. I think he'll stop be fine. It. You know who they're about to pick up? You know who they're about to pick up? Leonard Fournette. Leonard Fournette. <laughs> I'm telling you, this team, I went through my list. I knew this team was going to have more wins than not. 14-2. and two. Oh, my God. <laughs> I think, And I think they're going to win the Super Bowl. Okay. They're going to win this division, I think they're going to win the Super Bowl. Okay. Hey, you giving away, uh, uh, just, just spilling it right there. S- sitting out here for free. <sighs> Tom Tom Brady is out to prove one thing. If you don't think this guy doesn't still have a chip on his shoulder from being called a system quarterback his entire time in, in, in New England, I think he left for one reason and one reason only. I want to prove that I can do this. So let me tell you how he's going to do that, by the way. Okay. The same way Peyton Manning did it. It's a little magic trick, okay? It's a little little magic trick. And there's a this isn't an original thought for me. I didn't know about this until I heard it. The, the Ringer Fantasy Stat guys, uh, or Matthew Berry maybe, talked about this. What it was a fantasy guy that I listened to talked about it. When Peyton Manning went to the to the Broncos his first year and he just set the world on fire. One of the ways he went out to get all those touchdowns was every time they got on like the one or two yard line, he checked out of every run play and just threw a little dink pass for a p- touchdown and got a bunch of cheap little touchdowns to to fluff up his stats. I'm going to tell you they ain't running the football when they get inside the the, the three yard line. Not 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 one time. Tom is going to check out all of them. He is going to try to break records and set records, and he is going to try to prove to everybody I am not a system quarterback. I can do this without Bill. Damien jumps in by the way. Said this quarantine life is it, Chris? Hard? <laughs> no sir. No sir. No sir. I, um, I love I love this man. Okay, okay. Maybe I mean, more than, well, definitely more than, like, some of my family. But maybe in the realm of the people that I live with. I've got them 10 and 6. Uh, again, I I could see them 12 and 4. Uh, this is a, I mean, it, it ain't the easiest schedule in the world, but it does help nope. that they had a last play schedule last year. That's right. So, um, Thank you, Jameis. That was yeah. the parting gift that he gave them. That, that definitely helped. Or not last place, but, you know, no, not place. good. Not good. So... You know, with that said, um, I mean, if, if you think they're going to win the division, that's plus 175. I mean, if you think they're going to yes, win sir. the Super Bowl, I mean, what? It, I didn't even look at the odds for that. I'd probably get decent odds on it, but it, it's not. It, I mean, they obviously went down big when they picked up Tom. Oh, yeah. And they went down big. Uh, but it's, hey, it's still positive. Oh, it's, still it's positive. Oh, it's, oh, yeah, everybody's positive. Of course, of course. Uh, all right, so Mark jumped in. He said, uh, your videos are informative. Friends and I have been looking at the college games in Vegas on the odds. Uh, some bets out there that you guys nailed. Um, hey, cheers to that. Cheers to that. Glad that you are taking some advice. Uh, we will go ahead and end the show with that. We got eight more teams down. That means that we've only got half the league left to go. And uh, and I believe we're going to try and get in a show tomorrow as uh, our duties for SBR do not include tomorrow or Thank Friday. Uh, however, we will be on SBR's YouTube page. that Sportsbook Review. You can go find them. Uh, just do a YouTube search, SBR Picks, and you'll be able to find it there. But we will be live on Saturday morning at 10 a.m., Central Time, uh, going over you know the closing lines and whatnot for the games, answering some questions, etc. Starting next week, uh, we will be doing Tuesdays at five thirty, Thursdays at five thirty, and Saturdays at ten a.m. live on the SBR channel to uh, to discuss college football. Uh, but yeah, we're going to be doing more NFL previews and whatnot, getting ready for the season to kick off a week from tomorrow with Kansas City and Houston. And I mean, it, it feels it, it's kind of weird. Quarantine has felt like so long. And this offseason has not felt very long at all. I mean, it's, it's kind of crazy. Um, but with that said, we are. Mark said, see you guys at the pay window. That's what I'm talking about. 
All right, we're going to get out of here. Go on, like we said, subscribe to the SBR YouTube page. Head over and find our articles over at sbrpicks.com slash NCAAF. Uh, all of our picks for this weekend's games, et cetera. And we'll have, uh, we'll have NFL picks and whatnot ready for next week right here on this show. We appreciate all you guys that jumped in the chat and whatnot. We, uh, we thank you for giving us an hour of your day at basically uh, at least three days a week right now. So you guys have been fantastic. Make sure you are subscribed to the podcast you know, in case you missed the live show and whatnot, and uh, and keep dumping in here, man. We uh, we appreciate you guys. With that said, take care of yourself. Take care of each other. We'll see you tomorrow. Thanks for checking out Winning Cures Everything. If you want to keep up with us, hit subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. Visit the website at winningcureseverything.com, or you can like us on Facebook or follow us at Winning Cures at Gary WCE or at Chris B Giannini on Twitter. Share out the show.